Thank you, Arvind. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning from Dubai. Uh, um, I'm just going to run in. Thanks for the intro there, Arvin. Uh, you've covered off a little bit on the left-hand side of the page here, but just to give you a bit of background um, as to API Global and the, the inception of the business, the company was set up in 2013, uh, initially in Dubai. Uh, that's, where, that's where I was residing at the time. And since then, we've opened, we've expanded um, to London, which is now the HQ, Hong Kong, Kuala Lumpur, Cape Town, and more recently, Nairobi. So um, what we do as a business, in a nutshell, is we offer foreign investors a hands-off, um, stress-free investment vehicle in which to build a, a property-based portfolio, investment portfolio, should I say, uh, in the UK, and also now, I'm delighted to say, Portugal as well. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we do that today and then go on to some of the products that we have. <clears throat> Excuse me. As, as I've been said, we can have a Q&A at the end. So feel free to pop any questions in and I'm happy to answer them for you. So <clears throat> API is a business. Um, we work with many of the leading developers in the United Kingdom uh, and further afield. Some of them you can see here, household names such as Renica, who are the biggest developer in Manchester, Rommel Capital, equally the biggest developer in um, Liverpool, and then Elevate Property Group, who hold that accolade uh, in Birmingham. So we're not focused on one particular city. We're essentially a research company, and we will track the market and secure deals wherever the opportunity may be within the UK. Uh, and we do that through a 10-step process. And this is really what we offer to you as clients. Uh, this is the hands-off and what we call the end-to-end -end solution. So it's 10 steps, okay? The first step for me is the most important. This is, these are the building blocks of a sound uh, investment portfolio. And that comes down to the research. So first and foremost, API Global is a research company. We consider market dynamics. We look at market indicators whereby we believe we're at, the, we're at the beginning of the growth curve and we identify cities and even towns where we, are, where we project capital growth over the next five to 10 years will, uh, will be significant. Uh, we do that in many different ways and I'll talk to you about that on the next slide, what it is we actually look for in, a, uh, in an investment location. <clears throat> but before I do that, I'll just run you through the 10 step process. So step one, the research, it's what everything is based around. And step two, sourcing the projects. Okay. So running the due diligence, Arvin kindly said and informed you that I was a member of the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. So I'm fully qualified to run due diligence on a project to value, um, value property investments and therefore that's where this skill comes in at step two um, again it's crucial when before I bring anything to the market that all the the 121 step due diligence process has been completed that all boxes are ticked and that we're completely comfortable as a business that this investment will get built it will get built on time and the returns that we project will be achievable okay so step one, research, step, step two, securing the deal and due diligence, okay? Step three is the investment advice. So we've got six global offices and within those offices, we have account managers such as Rena, who's on the call. And Rena's role is there to support the clients, help you select the correct opportunity because we do have various projects. We've got several projects at any one time. Uh, different yield profiles, different locations, different capital growth potential. So uh, the idea is we need to work with the clients, we need to work with yourselves, and we need to understand what it is you're looking for, what your what your investment strategy is, and then we will advise on that, the, the, the correct product to suit your requirements. Uh, we then, once we reserve an investment with you, with you or take a reservation, 
We then pass you over to our sales progression team that's based in London, who will essentially walk you through the acquisition process. They'll take you through to exchange of contracts, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the mortgage process, well, we'll go through step five, six, seven, and eight here as well. The sales progression team will help with on the legal side to get you through exchange of contracts. We'll, they'll be in constant communication within step six with construction updates, letting you know when, when where the development is up to, showing you site photos and <clears throat> keeping you abreast of any market news. They will also help you on the mortgage support. So six months before the development completes, my completions team will reach out to you and help you secure a mortgage. We'll talk a little bit about mortgages today because we, we sell on return on capital invested. And that's really where you make money in property. And I'll come back to that. Uh, step eight is completion. So when the development's completing, my team in London will make sure that every, you've got all the finance in place and that you can get the correct legal advice to complete the investment. And then steps nine and 10 is our after sales offering, <clears throat> which is the lettings and management. I've got a, I own a sister company called Redstone Lettings and Management who will manage the portfolio on your behalf on the ground in the UK or in Portugal and make sure that you have a tenant at all times at the best market rent. And then finally, the exit. So selling the assets. When, whether it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, when you feel it's ready to sell the investment, we can help you with that as well. So we start from step one, research and manage the entire process for you for a nice, easy, stress-free, stress-free, hands-off investment. Um, just talking about the research, <clears throat> what do we look for? And the reason I'm focused on this is because it's important for you as investors that you understand what we do before, <clears throat> excuse me, before a, a development is presented to you. In order to identify the right locations where capital growth potential is at its highest, we look for market indicators such as supply and demand imbalances in property development, population growth, industry and company migration. So I'll give you an example of industry and company migration. The BBC has recently moved from London to Manchester. So that obviously will have a ripple effect on the property market in Manchester and specifically Salford Keys as an area of Manchester where the BBC is now based. Government regeneration, investment in infrastructure. So infrastructure, the most obvious example is the HS2, which is the high speed train that the government is building to connect London to the regional cities in under one hour. Again, that's going to have a hugely positive impact on capital growth in these areas. And then private investment. So that gives you an idea of the kind of indicators and the things we look for when selecting the right developments. This page just shows you the level of detail we go into when it comes to the due diligence of a project. There's 121 points that we consider before we sign off an investment. And then this just gives you an idea of the marketing collateral that we use for each development. So for, for every project we bring to market, there'll be development brochure, development fact sheet. We have an online portal. We will also provide a detailed cash flow breakdown. Now this is very, very important because it essentially builds in all of the costs on a particular property investment and provides you with a net cash position at the end. So this is essentially your appraisal. Okay, so this is a level of detail and how, how thorough we are with our offering. Um, just on the right hand side here, you see an example of a construction update, which will be uh, sent to you quarterly if it's an off-plan investment. We have what we call off-plan, which is develop, uh, which is essentially before completion, we sell the development. And also we have completed stock if you prefer that as a lower risk offering. Uh, on the left-hand side is just an example of some of the companies we use. GetGround, for example, is a tax-efficient uh, limited company setup vehicle whereby you can buy a property within a UK limited company and that has huge tax benefits. So we can talk to you further about that if you move forward with an investment. And then we've got companies like HCR, Blakewells and Muckle, 
who are some of the conveyancing firms that we use in the UK. And then you can see down at the bottom, Redstone Lettings and Management. So we have the full suite of uh, support when it comes to leading you through the purchase process. Uh, just a little bit on Redstone Lettings and Management. Uh, this is our sister company. We've got offices in every country where API has an office for obvious reasons. And the idea is that the, the way in which we're different to a onshore uh, traditional lettings company is that we understand what international investors need. We sell the initial assets investment to the, to, to, to the clients and therefore uh, we can manage the lettings and management in, in such a way to, to give you the best offering. Okay, and we don't just look at the down the traditional route of putting an art, an advert in a shop window to secure a tenant. We look at we look at corporate accounts, property media platforms. We even use relocating agents around the world and multiple letting agents to essentially give you guys the best opportunity to achieve market rent. Uh, these are some of the services we offer on the lettings and management side. So you can see here, furniture packs, we take uh, possession of the keys for you. We have referencing, we deal with all the insurance, all the protection. We deal again on the letting side um, as a full end-to-end -end solution. So that's a little bit about API. Now let's just talk about property. So why property? Why, why invest in property as, a, as an asset class? Well, it's a medium to long-term wealth generation. It's not a short-term play property. It's, um, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to park some money and almost forget about it. Just let the investment work for you. <clears throat> There's two ways of making money in property. And a very co uh, common misconception with investors is that they just look at what the yield is. And what I mean by yield is the annual income generated from rent. That's absolutely the wrong way to look at property. There's two revenue streams. There's the annual rent or the yield, and there's the capital growth, okay? Now you have to, when you assess a potential investment, you've got to look at both and look at a blended return on, annualized return on investment, okay? And I'll talk to you a little bit about that on the, ne on, on the next couple of slides. The ability to leverage via mortgage finance is absolutely everything when it comes to property. Don't get me wrong, if you want to invest in cash and that's your strategy, then fine, I understand that. But we, we advise clients to consider the leverage model because you can maximize your investment and your return on investment. And I'll talk to you a little bit, little bit about how that works shortly. Um, property is a sta staple part of a balanced portfolio. It's a low risk asset and it's a good hedge against inflation. So just here, you've got a graph, <coughs> which is the uh, nationwide real house price index. And it goes back to 1983. <coughs> and the blue line is the uh, property values, okay? So you can quite clearly see there's peaks and then there's troughs and then there's peaks and there's troughs and there's peaks and there's troughs. But if you draw a red line through the whole trend, you can see that property over time increases, okay? I think that's a fairly self-explanatory um, graph there, but you can see it's a long term. If you play the longer game with property, you you won't lose. Um, just there's been a lot of concern and questions and queries on uh, the state of the property market following Brexit and the state of the property market following two two national lockdowns. Um, it's never been more buoyant. Uh, I, be I, I believe, to be honest, I think because people have been holed up in their house for so long, whether you're renting or living or, or you own the property, I think people, are, you know, once the lockdown's eased, I think people are ready to move, get out, have a change of scenery. And this is a little statistic from Right Move, which is 34% higher demand in the property market since pre-lockdown. So we're not talking, we're not comparing to during lockdown. This is before the, thir the first lockdown. So there's, um, there's a lot of transactions happening in the markets at the moment. Uh, and this, this is just uh, another table from Right Move that just shows March, 2021, 
versus April 2021, the average nationwide asking price for a property has increased by 2.1% and 5.1% year on year. So it just shows that there's more demand, prices are increasing, and that's only a positive thing. Um, okay, so we're almost done with the, with the statistics, but this is a, a very, very interesting table. Six months ago, I don't think this table would have read anywhere near as, as, in, uh, as positively. Um, this is Savills. Savills, one of the leading property companies in the world. And this is their residential property forecast for Q1 2021. Okay. They look at the next five years capital growth projections. And as you can see, it's very, very attractive. London's a little bit lower on the capital growth versus other regions and other cities. Most of our business is focused around the Northwest, West Midlands, Yorkshire, these areas with cities like Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, Leeds. Um, and you're looking at mid to high 20s, 20%, 24, 28.8% capital growth over the next five years. Now that's significant. And here, just backing up what I said there, Northwest is really covers Liverpool and Manchester. We've got lots of projects there and it's 28% projected capital growth in that region over the next five years. So now really is the time to get into these markets. Right. So let's talk about leverage. Let's talk about when I say leverage, I mean mortgage. Okay. So let's, I just want to compare a cash investment versus a more, an investment whereby you utilize a mortgage okay and you can see the difference that leverage makes on return on investment okay when we talk about return on investment we look purely at return on capital invested okay so investor a on the left hand side here buys a property at two hundred and fifty thousand pounds they buy it in cash okay assuming a fairly conservative capital appreciation of 5% per annum for five years. Now, what we mean by that in simple terms is your property will increase 5% in value every year. Now, what's interesting about that is year one, the property will increase to 262,500, but year two, the 5% increase is based from the 262,500 and that happens every year. So what we call that is compound interest. Okay. So the apartments after a five year period is of 5% compounded each year is 319,000 pounds. Okay. That's a 27.63% increase uh, versus 250,000 pounds. Okay. Now, assuming a conservative rental growth, because obviously every year rent increases as well, assuming 5% increase on rental growth per annum, okay, that's based on a thousand pounds per month. So 12,000 pounds per year rent. Your rent, your income on the assets is 66,308 pounds over five years. So your total profit on your £250,000 investment over five years is 135378 And that is the rent, the rental income, plus your capital appreciation combined. And that reflects a 54.15% return on the £250,000 invested. Okay? So that's very straightforward. Bringing a mortgage into play changes things dramatically and the reason for that so the we call it loan to value okay so the loan to value is what percentage of the property value the bank will lend you and it's usually around 70 percent they will lend which means you need 30 percent to invest as a deposit okay so based on the same two hundred and fifty thousand pound apartment 30 percent deposit required by you guys is £75,000 and you will borrow 175000 from the bank. So the key point here is your capital invested is 75000 
and not 250, okay? So assuming the same capital growth, 5% per annum for five years, your, your property increases to 319,000, the same as the other, the other investment, which is a 69,000 pound capital appreciation, okay? Now assume the yield, your rent covers your mortgage payments, okay? So let's say the rent is 4% of value, property value per annum, and mortgage interest rates 4%, okay? Now that's not necessarily realistic because <clears throat> your rent's usually higher than 4% and your mortgage lower rate's usually lower, okay? Which would, re which would result in a cash flow positive investment whereby you have surplus money after you've paid every month after you've paid your, um, your mortgage costs. But let's just assume for this freeze, for this uh, example, the rent covers the mortgage, okay? And we call that cash flow neutral. So essentially all we're looking at is your capital appreciation is your profit, which is 69,000 pounds. However, your investment was only 75,000. So your actual return on capital invested is 92%. And that's the power of leverage. That's the benefit of using banks money to fund 70% of your investment. Okay. I hope everyone understood that. Um, I'm happy to answer questions at the end on that. So I'll just keep moving through uh, for now. So this is just uh, an example of uh, achieving the 93% return on investment um, using cap uh, using a mortgage. Okay. So 30% invested, 70% loan, and then it takes you through the different steps there. And it's a combination to achieve that 93% is a combination of capital growth and rent and yield or cash flow positive money. Um, some fantastic news for you guys at the moment is that the stamp duty, our friend Rishi Sunak, uh, the chance chancellor of the exchequer has in, has extended, should I say the stamp duty holiday. So stamp duty is the tax that is paid to the government on acquisition of a property in the UK. And they've extended the stamp duty holiday to the 30th of June, 2021, where first time buyers will not pay stamp up to 500 uh, property investments of up to 500,000 pounds. And 1st of July to 30th of September, up to 250,000 pounds. What I will say is that on April the 5th, a 2% offshore investor surcharge was introduced. So if you're a first time buyer in the UK, 2% of the property value will be payable as stamp duty on the acquisition. Uh, okay, and let's get into some pro some of the products now. So I've to told you a little bit about, the, about my business. I've told you about what we do, how we do it, and the power of leverage. So let's just talk about a couple of the investments that we have. So Birmingham, why invest in Birmingham? Well, Birmingham through population is the second city in the UK. Um, you've got companies like Goldman Sachs moving there. Um, HSBC have relocated their UK uh, head office to Birmingham. It's the first city uh, that the HS2 high speed train will connect to from London. And you'll be able to commute from Birmingham to London in just 49 minutes. 40% of the population are under 25, which is great. It's got a, a very high retention rate on the four universities in the, uh, sorry, three universities in the city. So, and it's hugely undersupplied when it comes to property, uh, as most of the cities in the UK are, to be honest. So, our flagship project in Birmingham is Apex Lofts. Apex Lofts is an 80 unit uh, high spec, new build opportunity in the air, an area of uh, Birmingham called Digbeth. Digbeth is the lifestyle and creative zone. Uh, you know, it, it's like the Shoreditch, if, if anybody knows London, it's kind of like the Shoreditch of Birmingham, kind of the trendy and hip place to be. There is um, the sites located uh, very close to a, the biggest tech and creative zone outside London called the Custard Factory. Um, and the developers here are development partners. I, I believe in this project so much that I've actually forward purchased the whole building. 
um, and put a significant amount of my own capital into the development. Uh, we have, if you can see here on the CGI at the top, um, duplex apartments with, that we call executive sky lofts. These are 1000 plus square foot duplex two bed apartments, high spec. And the idea of this is that there's nothing quite like it in Birmingham at the moment. The city's undersupplied on residential, but high end, high quality offerings just don't exist at the moment really in Birmingham. Okay, so the completion for the asset for the development is Q2 next year. So it's about 12 months away. Um, I've got a photo on the next slide or this slide after that that shows where we're up to on construction. <clears throat> we are selling a 250 year leasehold ownership in each apartment. Uh, leasehold is a very normal um, ownership structure in the UK. Uh, yeah, and let's just work through and I'll. So this tells you a little bit about Digbirth. You can see here in the bottom left uh, visual is the custard factory, which is that the tech, the tech and the creative zone located next door to the development. And Birmingham and Curzon that you can see in the bottom right, this is the HS2 um, station, the new HS2 station that's getting built very close to Apex Lofts as well. So genuinely people can live in Apex Lofts and commute to London. In less than an hour which is which is unheard of so it's going to have a hugely positive impact on on this development uh, you can see from the visual on the right hand side it's located in the city center it's right in the mix and it's close to here the smithfield master plan which is a five billion pound regeneration project which is where goldman sachs are going to be based Okay, and this is just some of the CGI, some high spec internal shots, the roof garden with the CrossFit gym. And then in the middle, you can see where we are in construction. Um, we're about 12 months away from completion now. Okay. The, uh, pricing on Apex, units start at £200,000 for a one bed, increasing to, I think the most expensive unit is £370,000 you can invest through a 20% exchange deposit. So what we mean by that is um, on exchange of contracts at the beginning, you pay 20% of the property value and then the, the remaining 80% is paid on completion of the development. Okay. Okay, now why Manchester? So Manchester has been a hugely successful um, investment case for us over the years. It's a growing city. Um, there, again, it's an undersupplied city. So it's the largest economic area outside London with 80 of the 100 FTSE 100 companies represented there. 84% uh, increase in jobs in the last 10 years. Properties sell three times faster than London. I mean, Manchester is a, a major, major investment hub. Um, again, 98.5% occupancy in city center apartments which is absolutely crazy. You know, you don't see that in many cities anywhere in the world. And it's got a 28% forecasted capital growth in the next five years. So it's a major, major opportunity. And it's, in a, it's a city where we focus um, lots of our efforts. Uh, we're just about to launch. So you've got a bit of a early insight into this development. This is called Fortis Key, okay? It's two new towers. Um, and it's 336 residential units, one, two, and three bed apartments. Now this is located, if you see here, in, in a, you can see on the map here, in an area called Salford Keys, which is where the BBC is now based, okay? So the BBC, you can see where Fortis Key is, uh, and the BBC is located in Media City UK there, which is literally a five minute walk, okay? So it's very close to the Manchester city centre, but it's far enough out and it's waterside living. Okay, so it's a highly sought after area. Fortis Developments are the developer. This is two years away. Uh, so it's a fully off plan development and prices here start from 140,000 pounds for the smallest unit through to 270,000 pounds. Okay, so a huge opportunity here with Fortis. And you can see here some of the CGI's 
of what the development will look like when it's completed. Okay. Um, so just going back, you know, £140,000 investment, or for ease, let's call it £150,000, on a 20% exchange deposit, it essentially means you can invest you only need to deploy £30,000 today to secure one of these units, which is very, very low entry level, okay? So that's really what we're about as a business. It's not just about trying to sell lots of very expensive London projects. We look for the value. That's where we, are, that's where we earn our stripes. That's where we can add, you know, add the value to you guys. Um, Liverpool is another uh, area that we focus on. Um, Liverpool's got the highest retention rate uh, of postgraduates in the in the UK. So what I mean by that is, when people go to university in the city, more people stay in that city to work once they're qualified, which is a huge market indicator for us. Um, it's thirty seven percent cheaper than London to live. Okay, so it's an affordable city. And what that brings is lower property values, but higher yields. So fantastic yield profiles, but fantastic opportunities to increase, uh, to achieve capital growth, sorry. Okay, and we've got um, the best property investment in Liverpool. Okay, this is an, an old tobacco mill um, called Tobacco. It was built in uh, 1901. Okay, it's actually the building with the most red, bricks in the world with a million bricks and it's a major conducted by a company called Harcourt Developments okay it says Cross Harbour property here that's their SPV that they hold this particular asset within but the, the holding company is called Harcourt Developments they're based out of Dublin in Ireland and um, they're, they're executing this unbelievable conversion project Okay, beautiful exposed brick. They've they've kept all the original uh, iron B, uh, iron um, pillars. Sorry, iron pillars. All the original beams. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful development. In total, there's five hundred and ninety two apartments. As you can see, it's waterside living. Okay, and all of them. There's no one beds in here. They're all two and three bed apartments. And every one of them are duplexes, which means over two levels. So there, I'll show you some internal shots shortly. The entry level um, for this is £230,000, but they're huge units and they're high quality units. Okay. You can see here a nice aerial view. This building is Tobacco Warehouse, the 592 apartments that we're selling. On the left hand side here, Harcourt all also built this. This is the Titanic Hotel, which is the best hotel in Liverpool. It's the best night uh, food and beverage destination in Liverpool. Uh, Collingwood Dock here um, is waterside, um, and that's going to be redeveloped to house yachts and much much nicer boats and private boats. Just south of that, you have Everton. If you know uh, the football teams in Liverpool, you have Liverpool and you have Everton. Liver, uh, sorry, Everton's new stadium has just been granted planning permission just, just below here. So that's going to bring a lot of um, investment to the area. Liverpool Waters on the right here is a £5 billion regeneration project of commercial offices and residential towers. And then behind the development, you have 10 Street's creative district so, and the city centre. So major, major opportunity here. We're coming in at the beginning of the curve and over the next five or 10 years, you're just gonna see capital growth and rental growth in the area. This is just another aerial shot where you can see um, the proximity to the River Mersey and the city center. And just here, you can see some internal shots. So the top left for me is the, the best photo, best picture. This is actual photo. These are actual photographs as well. These aren't computer generated images. These are actual photographs of the apartments. So it's a completed phase one. Sorry, is complete as well. So there's no development risk. You can buy and receive a return straight away. Okay, but you can see all the original iron features that are in here. They're all duplex apartments. So a real high quality 
uh, development. I'm just going to play a small video now on Tobacco Warehouse so you can see um, a little bit more about the quality of the offering. I'm hoping this will work. Okay, so that gives you a nice little video. They're actually, they're, that's an actual video, it's not CGI. They're, they're actual videos of the completed units there. So you can see the quality of the, of the developments that we bring, bring to market. Um, this is quite an interesting investment case. This is the last UK offering I'm going to show you. Uh, Kent is in the, the most southeasterly part of, of England. Okay, it's, it's known as the Garden of England due to its natural beauty, but it's quite an interesting investment case. Um, we have a development in a place called Ashford, okay? Again, it's completed, so there's no development risk. You can buy the asset and we can get a tenant in there straight away and you can get your money working for you. It's a 206, Victoria Point's a 216 unit um, development in a place called Ashford. Now, what's interesting about Ashford is it's located um, at the Eurostar terminal. So the Eurostar, which is the, in the continental train that takes you from UK through to Paris, Brussels, Amsterdam, and into the continent, the first station from the continent in the UK is located in Ashford, okay? And our development that you can see here on the map with the V is directly opposite the Eurostar terminal. So what that means is, that you are one hour, 52 minutes direct to Paris from this, from Victoria Point. We're also 130, uh, one hour, 39 minutes to Brussels, four hours to Amsterdam, but your commute, you're commuting to London, you're commutable to London, sorry, in 29 minutes. Okay, so a direct train from literally outside your front door to Stratford International in London in 29 minutes and 36 minutes to St. Pancras. So, but because it's located a bit further out of London, you're getting value. You're getting regional city prices, but commutable into London. Okay. Just to give you an example, I have a house in London and it's located within the, the M25. Okay. So it's on the underground. Uh, it takes me longer to get to my office from on the underground from my house than it would for somebody who lives at Victoria Point and it's probably three times further away um, in terms of distance okay so the commute the, the opportunity here to commute in 29 minutes is really one of the major focus for us on why Ashford's a great opportunity the other thing is next door to our development they are building a Hilton hotel which is just getting which is just completing now but also Ashford International Film Studios. Now, Ashford International Studios are basically um, where Netflix, HBO, and Amazon will be filming all of their new series and movies out of the UK. So it's a $308 million film studio development, which will generate about 3,000 jobs. Okay, so it's very easy to see where the tenants are coming from at Victoria Point. This has probably been the fastest selling development we've ever had because they start at 150,000 pounds. So you're essentially selling a London opportunity here at 150,000 pounds entry level with HBO, Netflix, and Amazon next door. 
I mean, it's it, it's very straightforward. It sells itself, really. You can see here, the, there's some CGI's here, but also the actual photographs of the finished product. Um, the other thing to mention, I'm just going to jump back. This here, this photograph here is the business lounge located within the development, okay? What's interesting about the tenant profile at Victoria Point is that there's a lot of European tenants. And the reason being, and even more so since Brexit, there's lots of satellite offices for Europe and mainland European companies being opened in Ashford because of its its um, ability, because of its location and its connectivity to to the continent. Okay, so that's it for the UK. Uh, I'm happy to ask any questions. Uh, in about five minutes, I'll be finished, and then I can open up the floor. But before I do that, I just want to talk to you about Portugal. So Portugal's a recent. Um, a recent launch for us we've uh, we've focused for eight years purely on the uk um i do have i do believe in the saying stick to what you know okay and the uk is what i know um but i've been spending a couple of months a year in portugal for the last five years and i've been learning the market understanding the investment market there and i feel i feel that now is a is the right time for us to to launch portugal as an investment opportunity now, I think the golden visa is one of the most interesting investment op opportunities in the market at the moment. Portugal has got a fantastic tax um, structure. Whether you're a European investor, you can, you can take them up on the, what they call NHR status, which is non-habitual resident, where you can benefit from it's only a 10% tax bracket. Or if you're a non-European investor, you can buy a property and qualify for the golden visa. And what the golden visa is, is a, essentially a passport program to get a European passport. Or if you don't want a European passport, if you're from a country whereby you can't have dual citizenship and you need to give up your own passport to take another one, then you can just have a golden visa, which is a residency, a European residency. And you can retain your, your passport from your, from your uh, parent co uh, country. So essentially the way it works is, I'll just jump back. The way it works is um, there's two there's two brackets essentially of investing, get securing a golden visa through property investment. You have to invest a minimum of 350,000 euro into a property if, if it's a refurbished property. And if it's a new build property, it's a minimum of 500,000 euros, okay? You can't borrow from the bank, so it must be a cash investment. But as soon as you pay the money, you will then be fast-tracked to get a European residency, okay? Now, this is an example. We, we offer both a new build and refurb. Now, the only condition on refurb is that the building has to be over 30 years old. So the Portuguese governments are essentially looking at how they can regenerate more run down areas okay so this is one that we have on the on the refurb side We've got six two bed apartments in this block and each apartment is valued at three hundred and fifty five thousand euros so you can buy one of these and qualify for a portuguese residency straight away okay This is the actual uh, photos of the, the next door building, okay, which has actually been completed. And as you can see, it's been completed to a very high specification. Admittedly, they don't amazing from the outside, okay, but that's, you know, a 30 year old Portuguese building. That's kind of what they look like. There's not much we can do with that, but what we can do is finish it to this level internally, okay? And so th that's an example of a conversion project for a minimum of 350,000 euro. We also have a new build offering in Faro. Now Faro is a city, is the capital of the Algarve. For those of you who don't know, the Algarve is the south coast of Portugal and it's where all the tourism is and where all nice big villas are and most of the money that comes into, into Portugal. Now the shipyard is 32, uh, apartments one two three and four bed uh, it's new build so in order to qualify for the visa 
the golden visa, you'll need to invest a minimum of 500,000 euro. Um, but you don't need to, because it's a beautiful new build development. So even if you just want to invest, if you want to buy this as a pure investment, then it stacks up with a 5% net yield um, every year anyway. So it's a great investment. I'm just going to play you a video of the shipyard in Faro and you can see the quality of what we're, what we're talking about here. Okay, you get the idea there. It's quite a long, um, it's quite a long video, so I just jumped through it. But you can see the quality of of the shipyard in Faro. So we're very happy with the first two projects that we have in Portugal. Um, and the important thing is, it's not just about the golden visa. We're selling these as investments. They stand up, out, you know, in their own right as property investments as well. Um, and then just a final uh, statistics, just to share with you guys. We've sold over. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We've sold over five thousand properties uh, since since I set the business up, uh, with a gross development value of over a billion pounds. So we're not new to the market. We know what we're doing, um, and we can certainly be your your property investment partner uh, going forward. And that is me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you uh, that anybody has.